Welcome to a special edition of the Balls in Our Court podcast. This is the uh, what I like to call the uh, the Jaguar edition. So as you can see, I'm by myself. I'm Kevin. Uh, I'm by my I'm by myself sitting here, but on the phone with me is a fellow Jaguar fan and aficionado of the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, Johnny Malone. How you doing, Johnny? What's up, man? Doing pretty good. Good, good, good. So uh, I'm just going to ask, what was your initial first take? on the signings that the uh, Jaguars did? Honestly, I was super excited. Um, as a Jaguar fan, we're usually used to getting our hopes up a little bit and being let down, but, I mean, they did a lot better than I thought they would. Got six guys who filled positions in need. I was happy. I like to call them the, uh, going off of the Big Hero 6 movie, the Big Jaguar 6, that that, that we got coming in. Uh which one was your Which one was your favorite signing? Obviously, I think I know which one was your favorite. But uh, which yeah, one was your favorite um, signing? For me, for me, it was Julius Thomas. I've yeah. been uh, on the Julius Thomas train for a long time. I've always told my friends who are Bronco fans that we were going to sign him, and it seems like he was one of their biggest targets. I think in I think in mid season this year, me and you were already clowning one of our fellow uh, fans who's a Bronco fan, uh, Zach. That uh, Julius was coming to Jacksonville, no matter what he he wanted. Yeah, to... he didn't want to believe it, and he uh, he was hyping up Julius Thomas hard. Of course, the narrative changes once Julius Thomas leaves the team. Then Bronco fans become kind of salty and call him injury prone or washed up. But <laughs> they they know he's not. They know he's a good pickup for the Jaguars. Yeah, uh, Cortez. Uh, yesterday, last night we did the show, and Cortez is is he's a Bronco fan as well as we know. And he was really high on Julius. He was like, "That's a tremendous pickup, and uh, we should be we should be good to go with him." We were missing that big red zone target that we we haven't had in a while, and uh, I think he feels that uh, that need completely. And I said, with the Jaguars, he'll probably be lining more outside than he did in uh, in Denver to catch some of those passes. Yeah, definitely. And people people seem to forget they always. Uh... A lot of people think he's the product of Peyton Manning, but if you watch a lot of his touchdowns, you'd see that many of them are due to his physical abilities and talents. Like he was outrunning defenders, he was being double teamed. I don't know, some of the catches were just awesome. So, I mean, I'm sure Peyton Manning helped him out a lot and he put the ball where Julius Thomas wanted it. But to not credit Julius Thomas is kind of ridiculous. Well, even look, when Julius Thomas went out, they struggled a little more. And you, and you can see it. Peyton, Peyton struggled a little more. I don't know whether it was age catching up with Peyton or not. But when he was out, they, they looked like a completely different team. Yep. I mean, tight ends are security blankets and whatnot. But, I don't know. Julius Thomas, I mean, it seemed like he wanted to stay in Denver. But it didn't seem like they were giving him enough respect as far as, like, the the team goes. Well, when does John Elway give anybody respect up there know, lately, right? honestly? So it, it's a thing. I, uh, he was doing an interview where he said he was building a house in uh, Denver, and after a few months, he had to he had to sell it because he realized he wasn't going to be there long term. Now he's building a house at a beach, so yep. it's much 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 nicer here. Much nice. It's friggin' seventy eight degrees outside right now. Enjoy it. <laughs> uh, and then we got uh, then we got big tackle uh, Jeremy Parnell, which is right up there with one of my favorite signings that we done. Uh, watching, they said watching tape. On Demarco Murray, as they were, they kept noticing Parnell just laying people out. And this yeah, is this is a kid that's only been playing football for he hasn't been playing for very long, and he yeah, already that's another yeah. underrated signing for sure. I I I, I uh, that was the one I said needed when people were asking me about the Thomas thing. I said I'm not big on the Thomas signing until I see us get get some linemen come in, get an offense another offensive lineman to help take that pressure off because you can have all the tight ends and receivers you want to, but if Blake's on his back, he ain't going to be able to get the ball to him. And we really needed exactly. to sh- we really needed to sure up that tackle position. And Parnell was one of those guys I was hoping they would go after. And they said they were targeting him more than they were Belaga, which came across as, well, okay, but they saw a mean streak in this guy that we thoroughly need on that offensive line. Yeah, for sure. And uh, definitely – Definitely knew going into this they had to help with the offensive line. I figured they were going to do a little bit in free agency and maybe touch it up in the draft. But a lot of people uh, who don't really watch the games like to write Blake Portals off because uh, of how many interceptions he threw, which is 
to me, always a dumb statistic for rookie quarterbacks because you can look at Peyton Manning on his rookie year. You look at a lot of quarterbacks, see they threw a lot of interceptions, but you have to actually watch the game. Now, Andrew Luck. Yeah. And <laughs> he Blake, still throws a ton. <laughs> Blake Bortles showed a lot of uh, flashes of greatness, which as fans, that's something I'm pretty sure Blaine Gabbert did like one or two things where I was like, wow, like his touchdown to Cecil Shorts. I In the Minnesota the game. game. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like, at that point, I'm like, yes, playing Gabber, playing train. And then <laughs> a few minutes, I don't know if I was drunk or not, but like a few minutes later. It got derailed. Got, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, Gabber's awful. But yeah. he re-signed in uh, San Francisco, I saw. Oh, yeah, yeah. San Francisco got him for two more years. Good luck with that. Because, I don't know uh, how he tricked them into doing that. But. <laughs> well, he signed for like two, two it was two, mere, two years, a million dollars a year. So he got like yeah. two mil over two years, but I'm like... It still makes me mad to know that I'll probably never make that amount of money in a year. Exactly, yeah. It, it, it's crazy to to think that, that if we could become groundhogs, we could have made a million dollars a year. I know, right? <laughs> and then uh, then you go along the defensive line where they made a, a big pickup from Miami and Derrick Aldrich. And uh, he comes across as a, a, a really... A really well spoken, a really comes across as a, a pretty cool dude when you were watching the interview that he did here. And uh, from what I've heard out of the people in Miami, they rave about it. From yeah, some yeah. of my, my Dolphin fans, they, they've absolutely raved about this guy, not only as a player, but as a person off the field, too. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I think he's uh, he's gonna be a pretty good pickup for us. Uh, led to the uh, led to the release of Red Bryant because he's going to be playing our big end position along with every other position on the defensive line. Best part of the interview was when they asked him, what is your job going to be? And he goes, attack. Yeah, that's awesome. And that, that came across to me as a guy who's really happy to be here and he already knows his role in this defense. Yeah, um, I did. I was actually at work when the first Red Bryant rumors came out and one of my friends who's a Dolphins fan messaged me on Facebook He's like, Jared was right after this guy. And, I mean, I kind of knew him, but I don't I mean, I mean, don't really watch a lot of Miami games. So I asked him for more detailed information. He was just he's a big guy. He'll be, like, just hyping him up. And I'm, I got, like, really interested in him. So when I got home, I was watching clips and whatnot. And then the Jaguars ended up signing him. And you're right. Like, his inter- he did, like, that press conference. And there was another video he did where he was riding along in the car yeah. at the airport. Yeah, that was that was a pretty good one as well just seems like a super cool funny guy like you could tell for all the crap jacksonville gets by reporters about how no people want to play there they all seem to be embracing that city and whatnot because let's be honest it's not cleveland or detroit so i don't know why i get so much hate and they go on and on with cities but oh yeah and the really big thing is they all all these guys that when they talked about jacksonville when they talked about the city and everything like that they talked about the fans already getting to them on Twitter and whatever and social media and already talking to them, welcoming them. But they went, they went to that thing to say that they love the culture. The culture in Jacksonville is one of a growing team, and they really all were gushing about Gus Bradley with his personality and where it's infectious, so to speak, to 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 other people. Yeah, and honestly, people. Um always talk about how it's like a team on the rise, but it really is a city on the rise, too, because oh, yeah. of all the, I mean, everything Con's planning to do, and I don't know, it's, I mean, I've only been to Jacksonville, I've been like a handful of times, but I always liked it, and maybe it's because I'm originally from a small town, but yeah. I see nothing wrong with Jacksonville. You got the beaches there, you got, I mean, I went downtown, it wasn't that bad. Well, as a as a, as a necessary hate from reporters. Yeah, as a kid, that's so I'm, now I'm an adult. But as a guy who's lived here all my life, it uh, to see what has happened from us since I was a small, I was a kid, to now that I'm an adult, to see the city growing that away as it is, it, it makes me proud to be able to say that I'm from Jacksonville. It makes yeah. me proud that I'm able to say that I've lived here all my life. We have this football team. You're not going to downgrade my city, especially when you live in a city like Cleveland or when you live in Detroit or when you live in El Paso, Texas, or where you live in some of these places where these people make fun of our city. And I'm like, have you ever been to Jacksonville? And they're like, no. I said, well, then how can you make fun of somewhere that you've never been? 
And they were like, well, have you ever been here? And I'm like, no, because I'm afraid I'll get shot. But <laughs> how can you make fun? How can you make fun of a city that you've never been to? And that is on the rise, according to every thing. Now, people are like, well, y'all going to play a game in London. Y'all are going to move to L.A. I said, do y'all even keep up with stuff anymore to even know that we're not even in the talks of going to L.A.? I know. Then you have Shannon Sharp trying to claim that we, we play three games in London. When well, we play one game, just, yeah. yeah. When we play, we play one game in London, and we don't even play it really. The good thing about Sean Khan as the owner is he cares about his team, but yet he cares about this city even more. And I, stuff, I will say that uh, the all the like Jaguars moving to LA stuff is kind of dying down now because I mean, people who should have realized it a long time ago that they're slowly realizing that. They're keeping the team in Jacksonville. They're, they so spent, now, yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of glad that's dying down because that was annoying for a while. But but he but but Shad loves this city, and that's the good part about having an owner that cares about the community and the city as a whole. All the things he's doing, and people don't realize that game in London is just not about football. It's about business to Shad Khan when he goes over here. He goes over there and he brings back business for the city of Jacksonville as it goes to our ports, them delivering stuff to our ports, making new connections, making new businesses that are going to be moving to Jacksonville from overseas. It, it He has brought so much business and so many jobs to the thing that people don't realize it, but yet they like to run off to the mouth that Jacksonville is just this podunk city. That's the beginning of Florida when you couldn't be entirely further from the truth. Yep, and um, I don't know. I just I really like what he's doing with the team. It really seems like this year they're uh, they're want to they're wanting to put a winning product on the field. So yeah, this this was uh, this was the year they needed to do it too. Yeah, and um, I know last year we only had three wins, but the games felt a lot closer than the record shows. Like there's a few games where it just came down to like either Portals made a mistake, which I don't fault him for because he's a rookie. Or something happened at the end, but for the most part, we stayed in like almost every game, and we like we should have had that Titans game. With the yeah, the first one. Goal, yep. but we should have had the Pittsburgh game. Uh, there, were, there, there were a lot of them. We were Dolphin game too. Yeah, the Dolphin, Dolphin game. We let that we game slip. Yeah. I don't, I don't care what some Dolphins fans say. I've had a couple that actually admitted it, but Jaguars were completely outplaying the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. It was those two pick sixes that kind of. Yep. Kind of hurt things. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to free agency. We went off of off of the snide a little bit there, but we'll go right back to talking about our free agency. Uh, next guy we got is Dan Scuda, the linebacker from uh, from the 49ers, who I think is going to fit brilliantly in the uh, the auto position that they want to use him in. That and, and that's what he specifically talked about in his uh, in his press conference when they talked to him. He was like, they told me about this position. And I'm really looking forward to being in that position. <laughs> yeah, um, this, is, this is another guy that I didn't um, know too much about, but after the Jaguars showed interest and signed him, started watching things about him, and his press conference, like, it just seemed like a really good addition to the team. And uh, I don't know. The defense was defense was really solid last year. If everyone stays healthy and everything works out, I really think they're going to have a scary, scary defense. And that's not including what could happen in the draft, but I'm sure we'll get that. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later on. We'll get to that later on. Yeah. And then they, they bring in uh, they bring in uh, Devon House from uh, the Green Bay Packers, the cornerback, uh, rangy, six-foot-tall guy, uh, the kind of guy Gus Bradley likes to, to have at the corner. Really wasn't given – a little injury-prone, really wasn't given the chance to, uh, to go in Green Bay, but when he did, he played really effectively. For Green Bay when he was on the field, uh, I think it was a pretty good pickup. Yeah, me too. And 